90% of coffee drinkers drink coffee with milk. It's really important as a barista to get this really right. The differences between full cream, skim milk, soy milk, rice milk, really aren't that much that your texturing should change. It's pretty much always the same technique. The only difference would be with something like an alternative milk like soy, you probably don't want to heat it beyond about 55 or 60 degrees because the texture does change. Typically with milk, I always advise you only want to heat milk for what you're making right now. So I've got different size jugs in front of me. I recommend a one litre jug, a 600 ml jug, and a 400 ml jug. And that's so you can just heat up the right amount all the time. The best place to fill a milk jug up to is halfway. You want to give yourself enough room that you can add foam on top and then you can get a whirlpool spinning underneath. So a jug that's full halfway is in the best spot. If you take a big jug and you don't fill it up enough, you don't have enough to get the whirlpool spinning underneath. You would usually end up in a lot of big bubbles that are hard to control. And if you take a smaller jug and you fill it up too high, you don't leave yourself any room to add the air that's going to become that creamy foam. It's really important to remember when you're texturing your milk, never to overheat, so don't go above 70 degrees, and never to reheat. When you heat milk, you caramelize the natural sugar in the product. That's what makes it so sweet and why it blends so well with coffee. But if you reheat or overheat your milk, you basically burn out that natural sugar. So it becomes less sweet, and when you put it in the coffee, it makes your coffee taste bitter. Even though there's nothing actually wrong with your extraction, Put good milk, good sweet milk with coffee and the balance should be something that almost doesn't need any more sugar added to it. It's really important not to overheat and not to reheat. When you're heating your milk, this position of the steam arm is really important. I tend to hold my jug nice and flat, I don't angle it. And then, imagine that your steam arm, you don't want to face it, face it straight down. What you want to do is have it on an angle in the jug. So it's directing the milk to spin around. If it's facing straight down, the milk will just bounce around and you won't get that nice whirlpool. Then, what you want to make sure of is at the start, you've got your steam arm not too deep into the milk. It should be about half a centimetre below the surface. Then you'll hear that, that slurping and hissing sound that indicates air is going into your milk. That air, while it spins, becomes your foam. Once you've got enough air, so you'll see the milk will start to rise in the jug as you're heating it up, then you want to get the steam arm to go a little bit deeper. You don't want it to go all the way to the bottom, you just want it to go about one or two centimetres below the surface of the milk. The hissing sound will stop, but it will continue to spin and heat your milk until it gets to about 55 or 60 degrees. And when you turn it off, it'll be about that perfect temperature, 60 to 65 degrees per serving. So, when you're heating your milk, always remember to purge your steam arm. And then angle the jug so it's going to force the milk to spin in one direction and put it about half a centimetre below the surface of the milk. If you don't hear that sloping sound yet, lower the jug. The milk should always be spinning. Once I have enough foam, I raise the jug a little bit so the steam arm goes deeper. If you're using your hand to measure temperature, once it becomes too warm for your hand to touch, then you just need to turn it off. It should be about 60 to 65 degrees. Always remember to wipe your steam arm every time. Don't let the milk build up on your steam arm. And always purge. Make sure there's no milk still blocked inside your steam arm. Tap any bubbles out and just swirl your milk to get that nice gloss coming through and you're ready to pour. When you're heating your milk, it's important to get all the air in before the milk gets to about 40 degrees. So that's about a warm temperature. You want to get the air in early because if you put air in towards the end, you start getting bubbles that are hard to get rid of. When you're adding the air in, you've got to remember to add what you need for the drinks you're about to make. So if you're making a cappuccino and a latte, you need about that much foam in your jug. An easy way to remember it is see where you start in the jug with just cold milk. And when you finish, see what the level is like. And that is your foam. And that's the applicable foam you're going to use for the coffees you're about to pour. A few common mistakes when you're heating milk 
is not adding enough air. Usually, you'll hear your milk screaming at you when that happens, or adding way too much air. So you get a lot of really big bubbles on the surface. That's all about the position of your steam arm in the jug. So, for example, if you're hearing this, your milk has no air in it at all. What you need to do is lower the jug so you hear that sloping sound. Notice the screaming sound disappears. If you're hearing this, you've got way too much air going into your milk and you'll see big bubbles happening off the surface. This is a jug that I heated earlier. If you hear screaming, it may also be that you're reheating milk. The milk will tell you that it's not happy. That's an unhappy milk sound. That's just because you're trying to heat more than one.